Hey, peace and blessings to you. My name is Jerry B. I am the Entree Musician, and so are you, but so is this wonderful sister that we're reintroducing and reintroducing, reintroducing. She really doesn't need that many introductions because she's done her own podcast here at the Entree Musician. But just to let you know, if you haven't heard, this is my dear sister, an incredible singer. In fact, she's the author of the book, being a singer, the art, craft, and science. Number one Amazon bestseller. She is the associate professor of voice at Berkeley School of Music, College of Music, Berkeley, the Berkeley. And she helped me to plant the seeds for what is the entree musician. I'm indebted to her with my life. <laughs> this is Linda Bolero. Blessings to you, dear. Hello, Jerry, and it is so great to be here and see you again. And I will not take credit for all of the work that you have done to make Entre Musician what it is. And you've just taken so much tireless effort. And it's nice to have been in the room and give you feedback and encouragement. But, um, but you are a workhorse and you've accomplished a great deal with this. So it's all on you. Oh, no, I don't, I don't agree with that. I would say seeds of encouragement, but also challenge, just like a sister mm -hmm. would do. So <laughs> there was a lot. You had your own bricks that you helped lay the foundation. And, and I'm thankful to you, to the late, great mm -hmm. Vance Anderson and to Daryl mm -hmm. Mooney, because mm -hmm. we just kind of massaged mm -hmm. it and, and made it what it is. So, I mean, that. Thank yes, you. sir. Yes, but you know, sir. there's a lot of questions I, I want to ask you because we haven't caught up and you have done some wonderful episodes here on the Entree Musician. But let's begin with your mom, because your mom is a centurion. Uh -huh. And, you know, I just want to hear a little bit about that personal experience of, of taking care of your mom the way you do. Well, thank you for asking about that. That's Absolutely. so nice. Um, my mother is 101 years old in seven months. <laughs> We're counting months now. <laughs> she's fortunately very healthy and um, she does have a little bit of, you know, she's lost a little bit of, of her cognition and stuff, but um, she'll still talk to you about politics and she'll still talk to you about what's happening in the news and she loves to stay in touch with things and she has uh, lots of good ideas and opinions about things, even though she can't always remember what happened two minutes ago. So it's this funny juggling act because um, she can't remember the simple mundane things that run in your day-to-day -day life, but um, she does remember the important things. So it's kind of fun. That's and we exercise and we do a lot of things to take care of her. So I moved in with her at the start of COVID and I'm still here. I'm not back in my place yet, although I go there to teach a few days a week. And um, we do exercises. We have an exercise plan. We do walking. We have a whole routine to keep her engaged. And most recently we got this wonderful bird feeder that you stick on the outside windows and it's clear gla uh, clear plastic. And the birds come and sit in the bird feeder and you can see them as if like up, really up close as if they were in the house. It's really, really fascinating. And she loves that. So we get a lot of birds, cardinals and blue jays and gorgeous, gorgeous things. Oh, that is absolutely fantastic. Mm -hmm. Cherish every day. That's I think that is so mm -hmm. beautiful. That's why I had to start this way, just to ask. And it says something about your spirit, too, because I find you to be a, an extremely caring person. In fact, you are working, always working, but you're working with an up-and-coming artist now, and you, you always roll your sleeves up and get hands-on with independent artists. you want to tell us about that? Yes, uh, I think 2024, the uh, word of 2024 is going to be, or is already mentorship. I'm doing a lot of mentorship lately and it's what I really like to do. And I think towards the end of 2023, I just buckled down and said, you know what, this is what I enjoy doing. So I'm going all the in for it. So I've been mentoring people for many years, but now I see that I can really focus more energy on it and um, get even more impact in the world. So this young woman came to me um, late in, in December 23 and said she had read my book and was very inspired because she felt like it she could relate to it more than other singing books. This is the book, by the way. And um, she felt like the stories and the explanations were much more relatable than a typical book on singing, which is the way it was designed. 
And um, she read that book about a year ago and she decided she wanted to study with me and do the mentorship program. So she saved up her pennies and um, has a wonderful licensing job as an assistant nurse. And um, she's a very talented singer. She went to school in New York. So she's got New York Broadway training and she's got um, all other kinds of music training. And um, now she wants to put her own music out into the world. So she's, she enrolled with me for a six month one-on-one -on -one mentorship program where we meet three times a week. And we have a plan for her debut at the Apollo Theater. And uh, fortunately she has a, a brother who is all in on helping to manage her. And he has got some great, um, great ideas, great attitude. And uh, they're such incredible people. They're originally from Haiti and they've been in the States for a while for probably uh, more than 10 years, I guess 12 years they've been in the US. So they're very, um, they know how to hustle and they know how to make a plan and stick to it. And that's one of the reasons I was so impressed with her because she made this plan all on her own and um, she showed up and she put it into place and she's making it happen for herself. And it's really extraordinary. Wow. That's excellent. Can we have her name and website? We can. Um, she doesn't have a website yet. She doesn't have a website yet. So she's brand new. She's her name is Gerlaudi Alexander, which is a hard name to say and spell. G G U E R L O U D Gerlaudi um, Alexander, and she doesn't have a website yet. She's just burgeoning on simple social media. We have a whole plan for these six months. And she's got a wonderful producer, um, a new label that's working with her, and they're going to put out their first song in the next couple of months. And so we want to have her social media game and her uh, website and everything in gear by then, but primarily also her voice. So she has a wonderful, wonderful sense of style and a wonderful sense of how she wants to communicate. She's a fabulous songwriter. Her words are fantastic. But she doesn't really know how to you know, where her voice sits. She's sort of becoming familiar with her range and um, the way that she can express things in a natural way without causing any kind of pressure or, or discomfort there. So, in, uh, in the, so it hasn't been a month yet. We've expanded her range by two octaves and uh, cleaned up her middle of her voice so that she has much more flexibility and sound choices. And uh, I think in another month, she's gonna really be in fabulous shape vocally. That is fantastic. So I guess what you're saying is that anyone who's watching this or listening to this can contact Linda Bolero and they can set up their own opportunity to go down this wonderful journey to expand their voice as well. Is that kind of what well? You're I think saying? that I think that's true. You know what? What I'm trying to say is that this this girl is a young woman. Really, she's 22. Is a wonderful uh, model for all of us because. She, she went to school in New York City and it was mostly musical theater and it was not what she was really interested in. Um, but she found her way to what her art, she'd continued writing songs and writing words and lyrics and things all during that time. And she, she had the focus and discipline to see what she wanted to do and to find a path and to do everything she needed to do to get on that path. And that's really remarkable for someone 22 years old. And it's actually remarkable for all of us and it's a lesson for all of us. And mentoring really is the best way to get you on track to where you wanna be in the fastest, most efficient way possible and without spending a huge amount of money. Um, a lot of people you know, promote voice lessons and singing lessons and it's just kind of this unending once a week where you're just doling out the cash. And that's really not what we want. You know, we want somebody to be ready to go and do anything they want with their voice in two years maximum. And if you have a mentorship program, you can do it more intensively. And in six months, we'll get accomplished what not normally would take two years. And it's because of her focus and discipline that, that we're able to do it. And it is a model for everybody. I, I have some other people coming in for mentorship this fall too, for, I mean, this winter as well. Uh, but they're a little bit more well healed. They have different goals where she's just so focused. It's a, it's extraordinary example for everybody. That, that's amazing. Now, you know, you're hitting my trigger buttons because in, 
in your time here, these few minutes you've been on, you've already hit mindset, discipline, and focus. So, you know, that those are the tent pegs of the entree musician. And why don't you just go into that a little bit more? Because it doesn't matter what your discipline is as far as your instrument, your voice, um, the mm -hmm. instrument you play or what have you. But mindset, discipline, and focus works across ages. It works across genres. Why don't you, because again, being one of the founders in helping to spread the seeds, why did we come up with those three things that were principal, no matter what you do in music? Well, I've been teaching those for many years and in the book being a singer, there's a lot of exercises about those things. So there's exercises about how to focus, what you need to focus on. And there's exercises about training your mind to go where you need it to go, which is discipline, right? So it's easy for us to get distracted by um, limiting beliefs or whatever's going on. So I've been teaching these things for a long, long time because I learned them as a young singer. If you're not focused on what you need to do every single day, you won't move forward. And the biggest, the biggest thing that I've found in recent years that is so helpful to so many people is looking at your week in advance, I'm sorry, I have a little bit of a cold, so you can tell I'm a little struggling there. Um, a, a little, a little, um, a week in advance, you look at your week ahead and you find out what is the one thing I can do this week to move myself closer to where I want to be. So we're very good at completing tasks, right? We're very good at making to do lists and completing all our tasks, but oftentimes that just keeps us really busy, but not moving forward. And then we get frustrated and we, feel like we're not moving forward and we're not getting done what we want. But instead of thinking about a task list or a to-do list, thinking about what is it can I do this week that is most going to move me closer to where I want to be? And what time in the week on my calendar can I put that in? So I have an hour free on Tuesday. I have two hours free on Thursday. When can I put in that time that I'm going to do that one activity that's going to move me forward? So, uh, this is a remarkable skill to develop. And if very soon you can do more than one thing, of course, we can usually do more than one thing in a week. But the trick is one thing that's going to move you forward, not just getting some task done, but that one big thing that you know is going to make the rest of your life easier and is going to get you closer towards your goal. And, um, and that's something that I think a lot of people can adopt. And my, the singers I've been working with really love it because it gets them actually unstuck from where they are a lot of people have recordings and they have music out or they want to start teaching and it's just too much and they have all the tasks and they can write down 10 to 10 items on their to-do list but that's not moving you really forward it's just keeping you busy that's absolutely right and uh going back to your loyalty toward mentorship i mean you've brought the entree musician to wonderful artists in the past uh connor cassidy mm -hmm. if you can remember mm -hmm. connor and oviante magsby who connor was on the season one of artists in pack and oviante will be on season two so thank you linda 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 this Great. is a young lady who really does champion mentorship so we appreciate <clears throat> oh yeah it's vital. I mean, I needed it when I was young and I think everybody does. And the, the biggest weakness we have in the music industry today and in the music education industry is a lack of support. You know, people come into music and they're just kind of flailing around trying to find what they need and figure out what they have to do and how they're going to do it and how they're going to learn that and pick up here and listen to some videos and try and figure it out. And it's a crazy way to grow and learn. You know, it's much better when you have a mentor. That's absolutely correct. Well, tell me in the larger context of music education, what's going on uh, with Berkeley as a professor? What year is this for you? So actually, um, this is my 10th year at Berkeley College of Music. I, I never thought I'd be here 10 years, but we start next week in the spring semester and it's been 10 years. So it's been quite a road, but um, you know, I enjoy working with the students and the singers and I'm actually teaching um, a lot of my own online courses now. I teach a, a mentorship program for people who want to learn how to teach voice and singing, the Pro Voice Teachers Mentorship Program. And some, many of the students that are, many of the participants who come into that program are you know, somewhat established singers who were students of mine at Berkeley 10 years ago. 
So I had this particular cohort that I have now, they're almost finished with the first three months. It's another six month program. And um, in two of them, I've known for 10 years and I've been working with them in various capacities for 10 years. It's really, really extraordinary. Uh, they're, they're wonderful singers and artists and they're doing great. Um, so it's been really re rewarding that way. Absolutely. Now, can you tell us how your approach to teaching voice has changed since you, since you first walked in the door? Obviously, when you walked in the door at Berkeley as an instructor, you had not yet written your book. So from, from then till now, what's, what's mm -hmm. been the changes in approach that you've taken? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm very fortunate to have be a highly trained voice teacher. So I learned from a mentor. And, and a highly uh, trained and organized approach to training your voices. It's the same training method used by Michael Jackson, Stevie Wonder, and many, many other uh, well-known singers and established singers. And I trained for a long time to be able to teach that. And so my training approach is, that is always the baseline. But I think what I've evolved through, through in the years is understanding more about the particular person and their artistic um, needs. And so at Berkeley, I meet a wide range of people and they have a wide range of abilities and skills and they have a wide range of interests. And the job is really to, how can you work with this person's artistic sensibility with their identity and develop and train their voice in a way that keeps their identity consistent with you know, how they feel and how they feel about their music. So the job of, of training a singer or voice or a voice is not to uh, take away anything from the person's identity as an artist. It's actually to give them more choices. And so people are often afraid that they go train their voice, they're going to sound trained and they're not going to um, be an artist anymore. Uh, but in fact, it's the opposite. And all the great artists that we've known through history have all had many, many years of voice training and, uh, you know, you don't get to be a Beyonce um, and, unless you've, you've had many, many years of training. She's had training in everything. So, um, so in, in even, you know, a lot of indie artists, they have a, a lot, a lot of training. So um, basically, if you're going to sing anywhere outside of your speaking range, training is only going to help you. But of course, it has to be the right training. If you go to get some old fashioned um, I don't mean old fashioned because of what I teach is extremely old, but um, if you teach, work with somebody who hasn't worked with artists, let's say that if you take voice lessons with someone who hasn't worked with artists, you may have some challenges because they're not used to it. But there are enough people around today who understand our artists and that singing has to uh, come from um, an identity and an interest in what sounds you like and can train your voice so that you can sing throughout your range and have a wide range of dynamics and have a wide range of choices in how you express yourself without tiring your voice, without getting hoarse or feeling uncomfortable. And that's the goal. And once you can do that, we can basically sing anything you want. Oh, that's uh, excellent. Absolutely excellent. And that's why I, I regard you as one of the best. And I'm sure many, 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 many students over this past uh, 10 years do as well. Now, you switching to this as an author, uh, you have also contributed to the Creative Life book as well. So what that's that's yeah. climbing. And I think you hit some peaks on Amazon uh, in your first week. Also, what was that experience like? Yeah. So the Creative Life book is an international bestseller. And that was an international bestseller in five countries wow. uh, within a week of publication. And I am, uh, have the honor of writing chapter 44. So if you can get the Creative Life book online. I don't have a copy in front of me, unfortunately, but it's a small orange book. And it's, it's, I think it's $10 or something. And uh, there is an ebook available as well. And this is a compilation of about 60 different artists, visual artists, um, different kinds of people who work in health and wellness, and they are all contributing their um, point of view and their tips for creativity and how to become a creative person. I mean, we all are creative by nature, but how to bring it out of yourself if you feel stuck, um, little tips and tricks you can apply uh, to your own creativity to expand what you already do or to get 
open to learning, uh, becoming more creative than you already are. And my chapter was about the neuroscience of, of creativity. And uh, I'm writing another book that will expand on those, on those um, uh, topics that are in that chapter. But it's about uh, having the mindset and the techniques in your daily life that allow your mind to uh, open and relax your body so that you can create more. Man, fantastic. Absolutely. Now, you know, I asked a favor of you and uh, uh, some other participants and community leaders in the entree musician <laughs> at the beginning of the year, you know, uh, mm -hmm. to share some things about last year, what they've learned most from uh, 2023, what they're leaving behind in 2023 and what they were bringing forward. Incidentally, our first taping, there was an audio snafu on my part. Mm -hmm. And so when we scheduled the second taping, you were not able to participate with mm -hmm. us. So yeah. much respect to Daryl Looney, Robbie Cunningham, Nanad, Anna Nicholson, Thomas Alexander was also on that, mm. and we did not have the wonderful Linda. So can you answer those three questions about what you learned most in 2023, what you're leaving there, and what you're bringing forward into this new year? Mm. You know, one of the things I think um, I've finally sort of admitted and allowed is the concept of holding space in your life and in your uh, mind for whatever's going to happen with your work. So whatever work you do, the uh, idea of being busy and getting a lot of things done is something that we're now recognizing is not good for anybody and doesn't really work. And the idea of holding space in your, in your mind and in your viewpoint has been really helpful to me. So I like very much that idea, just gonna hold space so that so everything isn't a push and everything isn't a drive to get everything done but everything is just sort of allowed to blossom and grow in its own time and space. And what is very interesting about this is when you adopt this, this idea of holding space and at the same time include that calendar and way of planning that is to, to think about the one thing you can do this coming week that will actually move yourself closer to your goals and you combine those two ideas, you get a lot more done than if you try to be busy and get lots of things done all the time. So it's cool. And I, yeah, and I think I already said that the operative word for me now is mentorship, and that's where I am focusing. So um, it's what I enjoy doing, and it's just a matter of how can I make that work in the world so that I can have an impact on as many people as possible and, um, you know, keep keep myself sustainable and enjoying what I do and the freedom that I want to live the rest of my life. I'm getting near that age where a lot of people retire and I'm actually finish, finishing my first master's degree in neuroscience and I'm going to finish that this year. So that is a huge, a huge task ahead of me that's looming over my head. So um, that's going to be a big focus for 2024, obviously. No, I think that's absolutely excellent because, uh, you know, as you know, uh, at my age, I stepped away from my quote unquote day job to uh, mm -hmm. become an entree musician full time. So, you know, taking this point in our lives where we're taking the next step mm -hmm. to begin is absolutely on point. And I think there are a lot of people of a certain age who are, you know, climbing out of the stereotype of, oh, I'm supposed to whatever to know this is a new chapter mm -hmm. and I'm going to just grab it and, and go with it. I'm grateful for that. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Age is really just a number. We have really a strange misconception. Um, I think that a lot of, uh, in the past, maybe um, life was really built around the children. So when the children grow up, you're kind of, there wasn't really a lot of choices after that. So if your life was built around raising children, once the children are 20, you know, you're, you're done. But Lot now our lives are built around so many more things than just the children. The children are the most important, of course, but but we they have so many other ways to contribute to the world, and that helps our children actually um, thrive as well when they see and are around this um, experience of parents 
reaching out into the world and having as much impact as they can. And I know that you've experienced that with your own children, right, Jerry? Absolutely. Absolutely. They are all adults. My youngest is 23 and she'll be 24 in just a couple months. So yeah, you know, Lori and I, boom. <laughs> <You know? laughs> what, what's next? You know, and it wasn't yeah, a but I mean, chair. It's, it's, yeah, but I mean, yeah, yours is are you going entrepreneurial too. And the, your influence has had an impact on that, isn't it? I would like to think so, yes, but you know, they're their own women, three daughters, and so you know, they're each very entrepreneurial and just grateful, just very grateful. Mm -hmm. It's fantastic, fantastic. Yeah, so the beat goes on, and, and we have to keep moving forward because that's the way we feel happiest, right? We feel human beings are happy when they're thriving and they're producing something and they have a purpose. And we can do that until we die. There's no age limit on that. You can be in your 80s and 90s and hundreds and still be having a purpose and contributing. And as long as we do that, we feel happy and we feel like we're we're doing what we're meant to do in this world. The reason we're here is to to give service to people and and provide that impact in the world, right? If we stay at home in our own box, we're not really fulfilling fulfilling our our role, right? The reason we're here. Correct. Right. That's absolutely correct. Now, mm -hmm. let me let me put you on the spot, if, if you don't mind. I mean, I've, I've done it maybe a hundred <laughs> times already, but uh, off camera, but uh, putting you on the spot now <laughs> is, you know, uh, again, going back to 2019, when we first met in dialogue, then it was our mm -hmm. very first podcast. We didn't know that there was going to be a world shutdown that happened mm -hmm. in 2020. And mm -hmm. uh, then, you know, kind of rebuilt from the ashes. Um, what would you like to see uh, happen? Because our community is growing. We're now international. We meet on Saturday mornings. But what would you like to see uh, the entree musician ultimately uh, develop into in a way? Because you've mentioned mentorship, you know, uh, for mm -hmm. your own personal goals. But what do you mm -hmm. see as a whole? Because you have a right and a voice to speak on these things because you were there from mm -hmm. the very beginning. Well, that's a very difficult question because, you know, you have done such a fantastic job of uh, creating this environment that's really focused and moving forward with people. And I think it's going fabulously. And I think that that is a great path. Um, I think that the idea of mentorship is definitely one that we can apply in the entre musician. And that's been happening a little bit. I think, you know, some people who have been in this this mastermind collaborator for a while are now thinking of themselves in a way of how can I coach? How can I contribute to younger generation that who, who were not thinking about that four or five years ago? So this is, I think, very important because we have to keep the cycle going. You know, I, I remember being in conservatory and I was at New England Conservatory in Boston and I was uh, having some trouble in my theory class. So I went to my teacher for extra help and we met once a week and he taught me theory. And um, we were doing the Bach chorales. I don't know if any of you listeners know about Bach chorales, but these are little studies in music that Johann Sebastian Bach played on Sunday mornings in church. And uh, every week he wrote a little ditty to play at church. And he also improvised a great deal. So there was quite a lot of improvisation, but we're very fortunate to have these little gems that he wrote out every week with that are fantastic uh, ways to study um, music theory. And they are short. They are, you know, 10 measures, 12 measures, something like that. And they're difficult to analyze because these are these are like modern jazz chords. You know, he was not writing classical music that was very square and very predictable one, five, four chords, but he was writing really complex music like modern jazz. And uh, so that's what we used to study. and. One time I was sitting in, in my teacher's office working on these uh, Bach, Bach chorale, and I said to him, why do you do this? Why do you spend so much time helping me? You don't have to do this. And this is like extra time from your schedule. And he said, because you can't learn music from a book. You can only learn music from another person. And so all musicians have a, an obligation to pass on the craft to others. And that was so powerful for me. And I 
repeat it to people a lot because now we have the internet, which we didn't have then because this was about 150 years ago because I'm a little bit old. Um, and we didn't have the internet and YouTube, right? So now people are going on YouTube to learn things. And that's great. You can pick up some tips. You can get some information. You can learn some things that you couldn't find out about in, before, when, before we had the internet. But you won't learn the craft because you need a person. You need a person with you in the room to translate that craft onto you. And that's mentoring. And that has always stuck with me. And I think that an entre musician, we can do that. And we can do that easily because of the extraordinary group that you've developed. Um, I'd like to use the word weave. <laughs> weave developed. <Yeah. laughs> But I keep, I, I, I think that you take away a lot from yourself. You're a little bit too humble. Uh, I, you know, I, I, I like to acknowledge what actually happened, you know, and what actually happened is I met Vance and I met you and mm -hmm. I'd known Daryl for some time and just having that open heart that you do that I could bounce questions off of you about what I was trying to create and uh, hearing your heart and hearing what you're trying to do in your personal life. I mean, that, that began the whole DNA process. And of course, mm -hmm. God bless the memory of Vance Anderson. I mean, he mm. just poured all kinds of incredible experience and gravy on the tactical, well, this is what you have to do. <laughs> you know, he had that, that spirit yeah. of, no, don't let them stop you. This is what you need, you know? And uh, yeah, all of that is just really unfolding in a very profound way. So. You know, mm, I, mm. I really do. I love you as a sister, Linda. I'm grateful for you. I'm grateful for uh, who you've been and um, for the podcast that you're going to do in the future. We haven't talked about that yet. That's mm. putting you on mm -hmm. spot number two. But <laughs> okay. um, do you want to tell us before we uh, wrap this one up a little bit about now you, you mentioned about the neural science of uh, mm -hmm. creativity and uh, mm -hmm. do you have a title for the book is there some kind of teaser you can leave us with as you are working this new book well, well the framework for it is be brave b period r period a period v e be brave because the the initials each stand for something that we can think or do uh that mm -hmm. opens ourselves for creativity and You'll find the outline of it in in the in the Creative Life book, uh, but I'm going to expand on it in the book and include stories and more about the science and some stories of how it's applied in life, and and things like that. So uh, I haven't got an official title for the book, but it, the framework is "Be Brave." So if you um, you can you can look that up in the Creative Life book, and you'll know what I'm talking about. And hopefully, the stories and the applications in the real world will inspire other people to adopt that framework for their own daily lives. And the singers I have who are doing that, and it, there's a sign, um, not a sign, but there's an infograph up on the wall in the Berkeley Voice Department in every single room with my framework, Be Brave. And the students take pictures of it on their cell phone and they blow it up at home and they put it on their walls because just using that point of view really keeps you focused, especially on the bad days, but even on the good days. And uh, it really keeps you knowing, aha, uh -huh, just this simple way of thinking about things is actually uh, affecting the way my brain functions and it's affecting the biology when that makes you feel better, makes you have more fun. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> Well, I thank you for your time. Uh, people can reach out to you at Bolero, uh, lindabolero.com. Not Bolero yes. Studios, but lindabolero.com. <laughs> the contact information and everything is on there. Yes. Yes, I would look forward to anybody who wants to reach out, ask me questions. I'm always happy to answer. It might take me a day or two to reply to emails. Um, but if you email me at bolerostudio um, at gmail.com, I'm happy to reach out. Um, my phone number is also on my website, so I'm pretty open. And if you have questions or you want to learn about mentoring and uh, or if you just want to ask me what I think about something you're doing, I'm happy to help you as much as I can. That's absolutely right. That's why I love her. So open, so transparent, and will give you the direction that you need. And now very much open to mentorship. So if you have it, like the young lady, Miss Alexander, then you may be the next person she's talking about when we get together <laughs> next time. <laughs> Thank you so much. It would much, be great Linda. to see you. It was great to be here.
Mary. And I really appreciate you and everything that you've done. And it's been such a great thing to have in my life. And I'm so happy that we met and that we stayed together and worked on these, these really interesting projects and more creative things in the future, I'm sure. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, Linda Bolero is an entree musician. My name is Jerry B. I am the entree musician. But as we try to say all the time, so are you. So here's what we want you to do. We want you to like, subscribe, and share this podcast. Go to the entremusician.com website. Learn a little bit more. Linda's on there. She's on the website. And you'll meet our community. And what we're trying to do is to strive to grow and collaborate and to mentor and to share. So God bless. We'll see you next time. Take care.